I think we should just dive right into it. Let's talk about some quarterbacks. Uh, I think an interesting one to start with is Justin Fields. Fields has definitely had some uh, not so great reviews on his early performance, I would say. Um, definitely like the fact that his rushing just uh, went completely missing in the game yesterday, that doesn't help. Uh, that's kind of what we were hoping to get out of him this year for fantasy purposes. Yeah. So that's a little bit scary, obviously, for a lot of managers. And I think there's probably a lot of people freaking out a little bit about that. So talk to me about Justin Fields. How are you feeling? Is he moving in your rankings this early in the season? Are you kind of staying the course, seeing what we see here? Or what's your feeling about Fields at the moment? Well, it's certainly not like a revisionist perspective, but you know, I, I wasn't as high as consensus on fields coming in because I just, you, you just look at the historic gap between like QB one, two, and three overall in points per game. And obviously that correlates intrinsically to dynasty value when you're talking about super flex, because these QBs don't lose much value year to year. Um, and the gap between like a guy like Jalen hurts and even, you know, Patrick Mahomes is 400 yards and five rushing touchdowns a year gets completely overlooked. But the gap that separates these guys and you saw it with Jalen was an astronomical leap in pass value and I just don't think Fields is going to make that and truthfully I also don't think that's any fault of his own yeah it, it's time to hit the panic button not necessarily the eject button like I don't think you should sell on Justin Fields especially because you're not getting the value that you know you can get back if you're truly panicking but it's all on Matt Eberflus to me man and he's out here making receivers run double routes side by side with no separation while calling zero designed QB run plays despite losing 12 games in a row as a head coach and Fields rushed just 13 times for 62 yards one touchdown in the last two starts he's completed 40 of 66 attempts that's 60.6 a passer rating of 70.7 427 yards, three picks, two touchdowns, sacked 10 times in two games. And that brings his sack total to his short career at 101, which yeah. is by far <laughs> the most of any quarterback in the span since Justin Fields has been starting. So it's just, it's not even on him, man, but you're really looking at, we have a large enough sample size. We have 29 starts and it's not coming. You're getting to that point where these stats are becoming scarily sticky. Yeah. Yeah, I definitely agree with what you're what you're saying there. We got a comment from Wade Zed in the chat. Fields needs to get it together. Yeah, uh, at least for fantasy, we definitely need him to get it together for sure. I I do think that I I am a little bit torn on Fields, and and here's why. Like, obviously, we saw what he did last year when it was just kind of a little bit of. Okay, you're a better athlete than everybody else out on the field. You have a cannon arm that you can use at any moment if the defense breaks down. And just kind of go out there and do your thing because this season is lost and we're going for that number one overall pick in which they obviously turned into more picks. Um, we've we've seen the proof of concept, right? Like he can be terrific for fantasy. Obviously, you can debate about how useful that is for an NFL team and whether he's likely right. to have that role long term or, you know, whether we're looking at a potential guy who could, you know, flame out of the league in a worst case scenario. Um, but that upside is just so tantalizing. And it's something that we've seen, like, basically since high school with this guy, right? He's been that, right. that guy, that prospect all the way through, all the way up. And I don't think that's just gone away, but I do think that it is concerning to me at this point that kind of all the concerns that were there with him coming out really haven't gone away. Like the taking of the sacks, the uh, kind of staring down one receiver and uh, just kind of going with his first read every single time. And Ohio State that worked because he was throwing to the best receivers basically available in college football in, yeah in nfl today yeah, <laughs> yeah yeah exactly so that was obviously a pretty different situation it worked in that situation obviously a lot better than it's going to work when the yeah. second best player on your team is apparently like chase claypool this past week um I mean, yeah, yeah darnell i don't know Mooney. how that happened like, yeah. yeah it's not yeah and so it, and again like not even a byproduct of himself but it's about like seven points per game separated him and jalen hurts and yeah he finishes a top 12 option but how long will that stick to his value if, if he doesn't continue to climb that that passing production and you're looking you know a guy had 26 touchdowns and 24 interceptions 6.9 yards per attempt 156.7 yards per game as a passer throughout his career i mean i just don't think his rushing upside 
is a good enough equalizer at this point if Matt Eberflus isn't using him as a rusher. That, that's again, I'm not ejecting, I'm not selling, but I'm panicking a little. You can't not. You have right. to logically panic about this scenario a little. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I've I've been simultaneously kind of being in both boats, uh thinking about selling, thinking about um buying in some cases i had an offer from someone like mid game yesterday when the game was not going well i had an offer mid game of justin fields uh plus a second for uh, my future first and jared goff and like that's a decent offer i would say and my first like in that league i'm uh it's a rebuilding year uh for sure in that league i have literally no running backs to speak of intentionally um but it's clearly a rebuilding situation and i had additional firsts i I have three firsts for the coming year and so i changed the first to the the guy who won the league last year i had his first um from previous trade and i changed the first to that and i kind of figured like the difference between the two picks that we're talking about here is yeah, like six or seven picks, most likely uh, somewhere in that range, plus or minus maybe right. three picks. Um, and then so I didn't feel golf for fields. And then it's swap, basically yeah. just golf for fields. And to be honest, like, yeah, golf is having a good couple of games. We feel like it's a it's a good situation. But you know, Amon Ra was injured for a bit in that game, and that's a really scary place to be. Like, who do they have after Amon Ra St. Brown? Is Sam Laporta just gonna Someone will turn get, into? Will... <laughs> I think so, maybe, but we'll get into that too. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So that's a scary situation where you have a, a quarterback who, like, I, I just feel so good about selling off of these, like, perennial QB2 types who are having good yeah. seasons in good spots for this year, and you don't know what it's going to look like next year. And I'm just willing to take that shot on the upside when the cost to acquire is so minimal like that in my mind. So I am still taking that kind of a shot on Justin Fields. I'm willing to do that. But in, at the same time, I was looking in another league. Can I still, you know, upgrade from fields to a lamar or something lamar hasn't exactly lit the world on fire in his first few starts there could be some lingering um resentment from his current manager over last season and the, how he didn't really play uh due to injury obviously but yeah, also didn't true. play the best while he was still playing so uh i tried that one got shot down there but i'm, I'm that's where i'm kind of at with fields i think he's a really interesting player and a player that's yeah i think that there's real polar opposite scenarios for him where you know that's not the case necessarily for a lot of other players and not a lot of case for other players at the quarterback position which is obviously right. so key if you're in a super flex league like so many of us are so i just think fields is a really really interesting player at this stage and what you do with them right now is going to affect the course of the teams that you trade for them or trade them away on so right i think it's a pretty interesting topic yeah um, and, and another like the yeah. Oh, yeah. Just like a quick tangent before we skip, because I, I know who we're going to next. But it's just it's really interesting to see some of the guys that do and don't get opportunities at that position. And then you have a guy like Fields getting 29 starts, most of them being losses. And and, and then a guy like Trey Lance, higher draft capital, more spent on him being traded for a fit. Like it's just the quarterback landscape in the NFL currently today is as strange as it's ever been. Yeah. Yeah, that's definitely true. And I do think we'll continue to see some some pretty wild swings in the quarterback landscape 